history book. Um, Jay will be getting to it. Um, let's, 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 which I haven't yet read. Um, let's move on because we're going to talk about high streets. Um, Jake Berry's brief, or part of it, um, is certainly regenerating towns and their high streets as part of the Northern Powerhouse um, sort of ministerial position. Um, I'm going to welcome in Sasha Lord, who is the Nighttime Economy Advisor for Greater Manchester. It's a great title, um, Sasha. While you're taking your seat, let's just show everybody um, the headline in the Daily Telegraph. Um, and this is about Pizza Express. Has Pizza Express run out of dough? Um, before we get on to that, Sasha, what is a nighttime economy advisor? What are your ideas for regenerating High Street? So, um, my background actually, I've been an operator in Greater Manchester for 25 years now, primarily in the music industry. I've got a couple of festivals, park life, warehouse projects. Um, and our first elected mayor, Andy Burnham, asked me to take on a role as the first ever nighttime economy advisor for Greater Manchester. And what we've produced actually, myself and colleagues at the GMCA, is a blueprint which sets out a vision for the next 12 months, what we want to achieve across our city region. So number one, safety is very important. Regeneration features very heavily in there. Transport you know, features very heavily in there. Um, so it's, it, essentially it's me advising the mayor uh, and the colleagues on how to improve nice home economy. But we, we, we see this headline on Pizza Express. This comes on the back of Jamie Oliver's restaurants closing earlier this year. Apparently 80 restaurants a week are closing across the UK. Are you just fighting a losing battle in trying to regenerate the high streets, certainly in the evenings? No, not at all. So, um, you know, I watched the ding dong about Brexit before when, when everyone was debating it. And everybody has sat back throughout the country and watched the finger pointing. I think this highlights the fact that the domestic issues that are going on at the moment. PricewaterhouseCooper brought out a report recently that, that last year they did a survey of the top 500 high streets across the UK and we lost 2,500 retail units. Um, Pizza Express are going through um, debt restructure. Jamie, as you've mentioned, I saw some good news on the way down this morning, actually, Thomas Cook. I think Hayes Travel are going to take 550-odd of their units, which is some, some great news. Um, but I do think the towns are evolving. Um, I'm certainly seeing a shift from the chains that were very successful in the early 2000s, almost the faceless chains. Um, the independents are now becoming more popular. In the towns in Greater Manchester where I'm working, in, in, in the likes of um, Stockport, in the likes of Oldham, um, in the likes of Wigan, it's the independence that's thriving. I think people want more the customer feel. They want to know who's behind it as opposed to just a faceless place. But there are businesses going into administration. There is a fundamental question. Do we have to accept that we're going to have fewer thriving high streets in the future? I think we're going to have very different high streets in the future. And also the design of cities needs uh, to change around that. So I've looked at this a lot in uh, American cities. And I know you could always sort of feel the cold wind on that coming across the Atlantic. If you think right. about it, a lot of high streets are just, <laughs> they're just too long not to put too fine a point on it. They're not designed. Right? They're often very long strips and they get kind of worse at, at one end or they're, they're sort of filled up with, you know, with low rental shops. One of the things I think we've got to think about, Manchester is, I think, doing a pretty good job on this. It's like, what, what is, why do you go to the high street? The idea that you just go to buy something or to eat your sort of, I don't think, you know, I think Peter Express also the product kind of ran out of road. You, you might go to Ashley because you want to meet people. You might go to because you want to combine a library and a coffee experience. You might simply want to, you know, to be somewhere where you can sit around on a pleasant day without feeling that you're kind of in the way of the, the footfall of the shops. So I think we've got quite a lot of challenges there to what the high street is there for, as well as being sort of temple to retail in the old-fashioned way. Do you need to rethink your strategy? I mean, putting money into the high streets without rethinking exactly what they're for, is it worth taxpayers' money? Well, the money we're spending on the high street is going to be invested against the plan. We asked Sir John Timpson. Uh, of course, he started his career in Greater Manchester in a shop in Altrincham, part of one of our best-known retailers, to come up with a plan for government. And he said we needed to do several things, but the main things were ask every high street with whom we're working to come up with a long-term plan about reducing the number of shops and increasing the amount of leisure, including public services like childcare and gyms onto the high street. And the second thing he said that needs a significant fund to do it, and that's why we've got this £3.6 billion town fund that's investing in towns up and down the country. But just to pick up on the point of safety, which I think is really important actually, there, in, particularly with the nighttime economy, people need to know that it's going to be safe streets properly policed. And wherever you are in the country, you want to see more officers on the streets, which is exactly what we are delivering. And I think that's really important for the health of high streets up and down the UK. Well, yeah, I mean, I saw this morning our, um, Ian Hopkins, um, Greater Manchester Police, he, he was delighted. I think there's 356 new 
police officers on the streets uh, coming to Greater Manchester. Uh, we have lost 2,000 on the streets in Greater Manchester since 2011. Um, but I think, you know, talking about the funds coming into the, the city centres, I think it's great that this is £3.6 billion. But I also think rather than filtering down from the top, it can only work, it can only succeed if, and I'm not talking about just the city centres where the, the main money goes towards normally. For me, the town centres, the regeneration of our town centres are actually more important. We don't want everybody going in the city centre. Support your local community. And on the communities, the town regeneration can only work if you've got operators, you've got key stakeholders, you've got lead from the council, from the local authorities. Everybody has to have buy-in for that to work. If they don't, it isn't going to work. Miata, what about the money itself? I mean, it isn't just about... Uh, the fund, it is how it's used. Should it be devolved? Should it be more, you know, made by local people? Well, it should absolutely de be devolved. I mean, I think with the sort of towns fund, I think the sentiment is the right one, but 3.6 billion against the backdrop of huge cuts to local authorities as a kind of drop in the ocean. But I think the bigger point is the story of our high streets is in part a story about online um, taking away business from um, our high streets because they have an unfair competitive advantage. But it's also, I think, the story of, you know, it's a visible story of communities under pressure up and down the country. You know, so living standards today are still lower than they were in 2008. So in the context of wage stagnation, in the context of uh, prices of things going up, people just don't have spending power. And so it's hitting the high street. So that trend is unfortunately not going to go away. So we need to reimagine our high streets. I think Anne's right. You need to think about, uh, and we are actually at the New York Knights Foundation doing quite a lot of work with local authorities where we're like, well, let's turn the high street into a community hub, thinking about how the local authority can actually buy out uh, retail spaces in order to use as libraries, as community spaces, but in addition to that, using commercial space as well as retail. It's no longer a retail destination, and actually it needs to be a hub of the community, but you need other sorts of activity within can I just read, Can I just come in on two points? Sorry, and, and it's, you're both 100% right. Um, Southampton University brought a report out that people want a more inclusive, more experimental um, you know, whether you're going to a book club or you, you're going to a cafe or something like that. So it's all about experience. Exactly. So the bigger stores now that are succeeding have got things going on inside that you can become involved in, more immersive. They're the ones that are succeeding. You know, you're looking now at... Um, the, the, the uh, game stores are, are dying off now. The ones that are actually working are the health and sports places. Bizarrely, we're seeing a huge uplift in ice cream parlours. But one, the one thing that does... <laughs> no, 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 no. I can assure you that's not in Manchester. <laughs> but, but one umbrella shops in Manchester. Umbrella shops. But one thing that does concern me, actually, and I've seen um, this talk about planning conditions being re-looked at, being loosened slightly, and turning retail outlets into residential. Now, that does concern me because um, if the authority is doing that without taking on board agents to change, it could really harm the nighttime economy. All right, let's turn, let's turn to the States, because Anne mentioned it at the beginning, yes. the long, long high street. The experience in my, when I've gone around some of the American cities, admittedly, quite a long time ago, was that they were being hollowed out. Um, people weren't going to the city centres either. Has that changed? No, I, I don't think that's right. It's been actually a massive change um, in population movement, where the economic activity is, movement of young populations, immigrant, foreign-born population. So you have about 250 kind of dynamic middle-sized cities, which is kind of missing in most of Europe and, and in Britain, that are actually growing. So you're looking at rural areas stagnant or losing population, these middle-sized cities, you know, growing and becoming more, having urban centers, you know, with an economic base that is attracting population. And is that because of jobs that's brought them there, I mean? You know, the, look, you have mega, the mega cities that are, you know, are growing, but they're very expensive. Housing is very, mm. very expensive. And so that's driving a lot of investment to these middle-sized cities. All right. Well, let's talk about U.S. politics, since you're here, obviously, to talk about that. Your book is out. Um, we say goodbye to you. Thank you very much, Thank you. Um, Sasha. It's called R.I.P. Say goodbye to the Republican Party. Um, <laughs> say goodbye to the Republican Party. That is what your book is Sorry. about. Let's That's hold it up. Uh, we can see it. R.I.P. G.O.P. It is quite a bold statement.